When it was launched in 2004, the Queen Mary II was the longest, widest, tallest and most expensive passenger liner ever built. Today I've been invited on board by the current crew as they honour a man who's played a huge role in the life of Cunard's luxury liners. And there's a culinary treat lined up for him to help him relive his ocean-going glories. Now retired, Commodore Ron Warwick has captained both the QE2 and later its replacement, this ship, the Queen Mary II. Incredibly, his father Bill had also been the first captain of the QE2 when it launched in 1969. My father was in command and he invited me aboard for lunch and I went aboard this whopping great new ship. It was only been in service a few months and I thought, well, if you've got to go to sea, the QE2 is the ship to go on. Now, you had a very important guest the first time you took command of the QE2, didn't you? Oh, I did indeed, and that was Her Majesty the Queen uh, with the Duke of Edinburgh. They came on board. Was that a nerve-wracking experience, having um, the Queen here? I, I don't think I had time to think of it being nerve-wracking. <laughs> it was my, my very first day in command as well. Yeah. So my primary focus was actually on the ship and uh, the safety of it and the docking operations when we came in into Southampton. Commodore Warwick was chief officer of the QE2 when it had to be quickly converted into a troop ship for transporting British forces to the Falklands in 1982. We've just been in a refit, we'd spent a vast amount of money updating it, and then all of a sudden these chaps came aboard with these big metal grinding cutters and just cut bits away, and it was, you know, what, what is happening to our ship? It took eight days to convert the ship, and I can honestly say that's the hardest, longest hours I've ever worked in my whole life, those eight days. We had to convert the rooms to accommodate all the troops. They covered all the carpets over with um, a hardboard. Uh, they took all the artwork off, all the valuable paintings. Uh, they took things like caviar off, which was a rather, rather un really unkind of them, I thought. <laughs> um, um, while the troops on the QE2 may have missed out on luxuries like caviar, on its replacement, the QM2, every voyage, 3,000 paying passengers demand the highest standards. How different is it cooking on a liner as opposed to a high-end restaurant on shore? I mean, if you look at where you are, you're actually based in one mini city or mini town, and everything that you need is actually on board. But still, it's actually logistics of actually getting all the items on board to make sure that we have enough food, we have enough commodities. Because you can't, just, no you can't no, no. just pop down to the shop. Today, they're recreating the menu from when the QM2 first launched in January 2004, especially for Commodore Warwick, his wife, and invited friends. You would always eat with the passengers? Most nights on the transatlantic, you, except the first night you'd eat here and have different guests each, each dinner. Oh! Yeah. What sort of guests would come and eat? There's lots of regular passengers. Sometimes you get an, a message from a friend who had a friend coming, a bit of a lottery who should join us at the table, <laughs> but it, it was really great. We have four luxurious courses, including duck, pheasant, lobster, tenderloin of beef, and this elegant chocolate mousse fondant. Oh, wow. But how does it compare to first time round on the QM2's launch? Very good. Just as good? Yes, just as good. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of memories does this meal bring for you? The grandeur of it, really, to know that people are still enjoying this type of occasion. Yes. Yeah. great. Sadly for me, my cruise is over before we've even left the dockside. But it's been great to be aboard for the cruise tribute to Commodore Warwick. I love a good salt and pepper cellar, don't you? And that was one of the best TV shots <laughs> of the salt and pepper cellar I've ever thought. I thought, ooh, they look nice. So there you are, Queen Mary, still going strong. You had yeah. a lovely meal. Oh, it was lovely. It was, and Commodore Ron Warwick is a lovely, lovely man. I love him to bits. You might be watching. Um, but the Kiwi 2 was sold to Dubai, but there is a good chance that it might come back to London. Yes, there's been two bids to sort of bring her back to her former glory. One by the Oceanic Group, Singapore company, but we're not going to talk Whatever. about them. Whatever. Yeah. 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 We want to talk about the Kiwi 2 London bid, the business consortium, their investors, they want to bring her back to London and dock her by the O2. We've got some pictures. Oh. We'll sort of like how they imagine oh, her, how she great. would look. It doesn't it? Yeah. It looks Would fantastic. she be a hotel? Well, yes, because I think it would make sense being so close to the O2. 
go and have a you know fun yes. night out. Because it's a nice thing. Back the bid. To. Back the bid. Weddings, maritime heritage centre, entertainment. Your own fish off the side. Come on, see. Pop a bread for you. you. <laughs> okay, that's all great, all very interesting, but none of this is important. Uh, stand up, Angelica. She's having another one. Every